friendship that'll never ever end. Run! It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Reaction Beanie Yo 589. Day in the neighborhood. My brothers and sisters, as we proceed to give you what you need, we are going back to Ryan from Tragedy Tales. Back to Tragedy Tales, y'all. And the title of the video is Deadly Drive. Five horrifying live streams number four. Now, the thing about Ryan, y'all, the thing about Tragedy Tales is that he always reminds us that your life could be ended in an instant. You know what I'm saying? In the snap of a finger, you could lose your life, man. And I'm pretty sure that this video is about to give us some more examples of that. And we're about to check it out. But before we check it out, being team, y'all know what y'all got to do. Get whatever you might need. Get what you need, please. We are back to Ryan from Tragedy Tales. Y'all got what y'all need, y'all ready to go. Then let's go. Now, I don't know about you guys, but one of the biggest draws of watching live streams is the fact that everything's unfolding in real time. Sure, you can watch the replay the next day, but it's never quite the same, is it? The thrill of witnessing events live alongside viewers from all across the world is truly unmatched. Yep. But it's obvious to say that just due to the nature of being live, live streams can capture moments of pure adrenaline and joy, but they can also capture moments of total horror and tragedy. From the woman in China who drank two liters of wine on stream to the totally avoidable CrossFit Games incident, I'm Ryan from Tragedy Tales, and today we're going to explore five more examples of horrifying live streams. So, without any further ado, let's get right into it. Get whatever you may need. Number five. Now this horrifying live stream unfolded in the bustling metropolis of Bangkok, Thailand. In Bangkok lived 41-year-old Nguyen Pimporn and her husband. Nguyen worked in the local area, but her main passion and her hobby was on social media. She'd garnered a small following going by the name of Teacher One and on her various social media feeds, she'd mostly post pictures and videos of what looked like to me a pyramid scheme. Regardless, I'm not going to judge anyone. In amongst these pyramid scheme posts, she posts photos of her meals and then posts videos about how she'd cooked them. Occasionally, to treat her viewers, Nguyen would go live on Facebook and cook dinner for her and her husband, live streaming to all her friends and fans. She sounds like a lovely person. However, on May the 25th, 2021, Sadly, Nguyen would go live for the very last time. Mm. That day was like any other. She began her live stream in her kitchen, standing at her stove as she usually did. <laughs> the cursed live stream showed her adding ingredients to the pan, stirring and smiling. The stream goes on for a while, with Nguyen speaking to the camera and joking, 
Sadly, I can't make out any of it because I don't speak the language. Of course, this stream goes on without faults. She's cooking, she's having fun. It's all smiles and laughter until it's not. Just a few minutes into the stream, as Nguyen was stirring the food, suddenly her face goes pale. Something goes pop and she suddenly stops. It's clear to see that something was deadly wrong. Within the space of just a few seconds, all captured on stream, Nguyen went pale as a ghost and just like that, fell unconscious, falling face forward towards the hot stove. Oh! Oh, shit! Upon impact with the stove, Nguyen collapsed backwards onto the ground, all while viewers watched in shock. Still live, Nguyen could be seen off camera, shaking and convulsing. It's an absolutely horrible watch that I don't recommend you go seek out. But after a few minutes, her husband enters from the other room and quickly notices his wife on the floor. He I mean, how much more random of a freaking tragedy can you get? You know what I'm saying, man? That make me scared to walk to the stove because I might pass out on, and hit my head on the stove while it's burning hot. You know what I'm saying, man? Like, for this to happen to her is so freaking random. Y'all see what I was talking about earlier? Didn't I just tell y'all about how Ryan was telling you how in an instant a tragedy can happen? Now, I don't know if she died or not. I hope she didn't. But it's just so crazy for her to just pass out while she is literally at the stove where she can burn her head and all that craziness. Wow. He dragged her out of the kitchen and out of frame and frantically died for an ambulance. And while emergency teams arrived swiftly, nothing could be done to save her life. Oh. She died on the way to the hospital. Oh my God. After an autopsy, it was revealed that Nguyen had an enlarged heart and that she had suffered a small heart attack on stream. Her official cause of death was a heart attack caused by a blood clot in one of her ventricles. Absolutely tragic. And for this to happen on live, what are the chances? This entry is a prime example of why I say live life to the fullest. Yes. Because this could be any one of us. Some people say that we're each given a finite number of heartbeats, and once we use them up, that's it. And stories like this make me think about that phrase. All of us have a timer above our heads, but neither one of us can see how much time is left. Boy, Ryan, me and Ryan is on the same way, wavelength being seen. What he just said right then is what I've been believing since I was a, a teenager. We all got a time on our head, above our head. We can't see it or whatever. It might be inside our soul, in our body, in our soul, but we all got a time. And it's not ticking up, it's ticking down. And when it reached that zero, that's it. We dead. You know what I'm saying, man? But as far as her, if she didn't die from falling on the stove or nothing like that. She just died from just having a random heart attack, man. Like, seriously, while I'm talking to y'all, I could just have a heart attack like her. You know what I'm saying? Something could happen to me that would cause me to freaking die right now. It can just happen out of nowhere, no matter how healthy and good you look. No, None of that matters, man. Tragedy can strike at any time. I went into this video talking about that. And the first one that Ryan presented to us was the perfect example. That lady just had a random freaking a heart attack, man. Oh, my God. We just started off strong, y'all. We have started off strong. Let's get to the next one. Number four. Talking about living life to the fullest, it's a phrase that, while sounds inspiring, only goes so far. Yes, go crazy, have fun, live your life, but never lose sight of responsibility. With that in mind, this story is a chilling example of exactly what happens when that line is crossed. This truly haunted entry begins in late 2017 in Espoo, Finland, near Helsinki. Unfortunately, I was unable to find the exact date that this stream occurred, but the events that followed are certainly unforgettable, and definitely one that we can all learn from. That fateful day, a Periscope stream began, showing what looked like an ordinary night between a man and a woman. If you're not familiar,
Periscope was a Twitter-only live streaming platform that shut down in March of 2021. It was one of the first of its kind and was actually one of the first to be shut down. The streaming question, from what I can tell, started at midnight. On the replay, you can see a woman identified as Mia Marie and what looked to be her boyfriend. On the stream, Mia and her boyfriend were drinking and smoking and chatting casually to the viewers, enjoying what they thought to be a harmless night in. You can see, despite it being around midnight, it's actually clearly daylight. Now this is because in Southern Finland, the sun actually barely sets. Some places see 20 hours of sunlight and in other places, darkness never settles, leading to 24 hours of sunlight a day. All on stream, after two hours of heavy drinking and smoking, the pair decided to make a decision that would cost them dearly. At around 2 a.m., the pair decided to take a drive in the man's Audi. Oh, At approximately 2.04 a.m., Mia announced on the stream that they were going in the Audi on a little trip. The stream followed, showing Mia leaving the house and getting into the back of the man's car. Your Audi. This is just a terrible decision, man. This is a terrible decision. But see, this is the, 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 the devil within the alcohol. This is the devil within the alcohol. That goddamn devil within the alcohol will make you think that you can do stuff that you can't. You know what I'm saying, man? Like, they should have never even think, thought that they can freaking go drive this car right now, go on a, a road trip right now, but the damn devil in the alcohol got them thinking that they can this is going to end so tragic. I already feel it, y'all. Let's, let's go, man. Moments later, they were on the road with the man driving like he was on a racetrack, recklessly exceeding the speed limit. Nervously on stream, Mia laughed and smiled and told the man not to be crazy. She asked him to slow down, but her words fell on deaf ears. And this is when they approached a slight bend in the road around a mile away from the house. Literally two minutes after setting off, at almost 2.06 a.m., the unthinkable occurred. The stream captured what was obviously a severe crash. The frame spins and spins like a washing machine, followed by a loud crashing before it suddenly cuts to black, leaving viewers that were interacting and watching in complete shock. That quick, that quick, that quick. Get the snap of a finger, my brothers and sisters, being team. That freaking quick, it can all just go wrong, man. That freaking alcohol, y'all. I'm telling you, man. And if you if you if you out there, you know, you know. If you drink, you know what I'm saying, man. If you like to indulge in the alcohol, you know how it can make you feel like you can do something that you don't need to be doing at that time. Stream, you can hear the man's chilling final words in response to being told to slow down. He said, well, there's no problem. I'll just use the handbrake, look. It was a small mercy, however, that the stream cut out when it did, sparing viewers from the worst. The car, traveling at an estimated 65 miles an hour, more than double the speed limit, veered off the road. It barrel rolled through multiple trees, tearing the landscape, folding like a tin can until it finally came to a stop. The wreck wasn't found until 6 a.m. that morning when it was discovered by a passenger on a passing bus. When the police arrived at the scene, it was far too late. It was a bloodbath. Mia and the driver had died hours ago on impact. The force of the crash was so intense that even their seatbelts had been ripped off. Just think about how much force it actually takes for your seatbelt to completely rip off. The force of this crash was truly unsurvivable. This tragic event raises several unsettling questions. Why weren't the authorities immediately alerted when the pair hinted at their reckless plan? And why did they choose to get drunk and go driving anyway? There's so many questions. Mia, though intoxicated, tried to prevent the disaster by urging the driver to slow down, but the driver ignored her warnings and still chose to drive recklessly, sealing both of their fates. Honestly, it's a miracle that they didn't kill anyone else on the road. Yeah. All of this behavior was extremely selfish, and I know it was early in the morning, but what if they'd hit another car with a family or a baby in it? All of this just shouldn't have occurred. This particular case garnered significant media attention, not only because of the truly horrifying crash, 
but because it played out in front of a live audience. It serves as a grim reminder of the responsibilities that come with both driving and the power of live streaming. The lesson here is clear. Don't drink and drive. And life is precious. The driver had the ultimate responsibility here and failed to heed the warnings, resulting in a tragedy that could have easily been prevented. I mean, yes, plain and simple. Don't drink and drive. But I just got to answer a question that Ryan asked. He asked, why would they even go on the road while they are uh, drunk? They going on the road because they is drunk. You know what I'm saying? Why would they drive when you're drinking? Because they are drinking. You know what I'm saying, man? I'm telling you that alcohol, y'all, it make you think that you can do things that you can't at that time or you shouldn't be able to you shouldn't be doing at that time man and they went out there at the wrong time and it's just so freaking terrible and you know they was drunk y'all this is how you know they was drunk as elf you know what i'm saying man because it happened the crash happened two minutes after this is what ryan said he said after two minutes the crash happened of them being on the road taking off from the house or wherever they was at you know what i'm saying man it, it can happen it just snap of the finger this the theme of this all uh, video y'all seriously snap of a finger man it could just all go wrong and when you put alcohol into the equation especially uh, the amount they had consumed you know it's gonna go wrong. Let's go to number three. Now this abhorrent live stream unfolded in March of 2021 in a small dimly lit room in China where a young female streamer known for her engaging and interactive broadcasts on Du Yin decided to host a live event that would tragically become her last. The stream in question opens with blasting music in the background. The room was decorated with bright, colourful backdrops designed to attract and hold the attention of her growing audience. With the allure of viewer donations driving her content, behind her sat what she described as a Wheel of Mayhem, a roulette-style game that promised both entertainment and risk. The premise was simple but dangerous. Viewers could donate money to spin the wheel and whatever it landed on, the streamer was obliged to consume. The wheel was divided into various segments, each segment labeled with a different disgusting food or drink. For example, they had garlic, ginger, mustard, raw eggs, and most dangerously, white wine. Basically, the higher you paid, wherever it landed on, she would have to eat more and more of that. Of course, this brings the potential for high earnings, but of course, the potential for risk. Now I've already covered a live stream on this channel where a man ate a handful of centipedes and died. Now that was crazy, but this is clearly worse. The bright colors on the wheel, along with the playful atmosphere, masked the inherent danger of the challenge, yeah. attracting all ages of viewers. That night, the excitement of the audience was palpable as each spin brought a new wave of anticipation and thrill. However, as the stream progressed, the stakes grew higher and higher things quickly got out of hand as the donations reached a significant sum, $13,000, an mm. eye-watering amount that would come at an unbearable cost. The streamer soon found herself drinking not just a glass of wine, not two, but instead a whole bowl full of alcohol full of two liters of wine. She then proceeded to break an egg into the bowl of wine, then she added a bunch of wasabi and then she added what looks like a whole uncut sausage. So she's just out here drinking any damn thing. You know what I'm saying, man? Like, what the freak are you doing, man? You just out here drinking anything. You just mixing a whole bunch of crazy ish together and drinking it. Man, this ain't even worth $13,000. This right here is not worth $13,000, Bean Team. $13 million. Yeah, I, 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 I may have a conversation with you. The viewers, intoxicated by the thrill of the game, continued to encourage her to drink, oblivious to the deadly consequences that were soon to follow. Because what the audience didn't know, and perhaps the streamer herself underestimated, was that earlier in the day, the streamer had taken an antibiotic prescribed for a minor infection, known as cephalosporins. This type of antibiotic is known to have severe interactions with alcohol, 
leading to serious and potentially fatal side effects. On stream, as the alcohol coursed through her system, the combination with the medicine set off a deadly chain reaction. The signs of distress soon became apparent on the live stream, but by then, it was too late. Soon after chugging this bowl of wine, she seems to convulse and turn white. It was clear that something was deadly wrong. What started as a light-hearted stream was now taking a dangerous turn. Just moments after drinking the bowl, she stood up, convulsing and fell off camera and rushed off of the live stream. The cheerful room was now eerily silent, save for the concerned messages that were now flooding the chat. But where were they five minutes ago when she was chugging a bowl full of wine? Panic began to set in as viewers frantically tried to contact emergency services, sharing the stream across social media in hopes of getting help. But the damage had already been done. The unnamed streamer was rushed to the hospital, but by the time medical personnel arrived, she was pronounced dead. Damn. Her cause of death was alcohol poisoning caused by the reaction of the antibiotic. I saw this posted all over social media and it raised serious questions about the ethics of viewer-driven content, the pressures that streamers face to entertain at all costs, and the lack of safeguards in place to protect individuals from such extreme situations, even if the situation is caused by themselves. The platform Douyin, which is basically China's version of TikTok, faced heavy scrutiny for allowing such dangerous content to be broadcast without intervention. The law of quick money and the desire to please an audience led a woman to her untimely death, all in the name of entertainment. Man, that's so tragic. There go another one, y'all. You can be gone just like that, but that one right there reminded me of what I really wanted to just speak on in general as far as like this whole story, not this story, but this video is going. It's about live streaming, man. These people are literally dying on live stream, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got I'm, you got to think about the people out there in the audience that's watching them, seeing them go through this craziness. You know what I'm saying? It's like that adds another layer to the craziness man god bro for her to just i guess i don't even think i don't even think y'all i don't think it's just the wine that killed her or that she was gulping down wine you know what i'm saying man it was a combination of things but all i was saying is like uh, $13,000 would have made me drink that ish and I was joking about saying maybe 13 million you can you can convince me or whatever man but it's like no nah, bro it's like certain like money money would never uh be worth you taking a risk on your life you know what I'm saying no monetary value will be you will be worth you risking your life long story short story long these live streams are crazy, y'all. Let's go. Number two. Double checking should be second nature, especially when lives are at stake. A single moment of caution can prevent tragedies and even stop unimaginable heartache. With that in mind, this terrible stream unfolded on March the 28th 2017. What began as a routine chase for veteran storm chasers, 57-year-old Kelly Jean Williamson, along with 55-year-old Randall Yarnall, quickly turned into a nightmare that played out live for their audience. Now, Kelly and Randall were well known in the storm chasing community. And by storm chasing, I mean they chased storms and chased tornadoes and recorded them when they formed. Well, storm tracker Kelly Williamson and Randy Yarnell go head to head with every storm imaginable in the new exciting series, Storm Wranglers. The pair featured on the Weather Channel's show, Storm Wranglers, and they had dedicated years to documenting severe weather, with Kelly having almost 10 years experience under his belt. His deep understanding of weather patterns, tornado formations, and storm behaviors made him a respected figure among his peers. Randall, on the other hand, while experienced, he relied heavily on Kelly's seasoned expertise Together, they weren't just chasing storms for the thrill, they were capturing vital footage for educational, research, and media purposes. Their work that they provided for the Weather Channel provided live streams and video footage that played a crucial part in informing the public about ongoing severe weather events in real time. However, this dedication to their craft would ultimately lead to their tragic, untimely end. 
on the- yep i already felt that y'all I already knew it man it's one of those cases where it's like you keep on playing with a snake you gonna eventually end up getting bit you know what i'm saying man you keep going out there in this terrible weather you gonna end up being a tragedy of that terrible weather on that fateful day kelly and randall were tracking a powerful supercell storm near spur texas all while broadcasting the whole thing live to the weather channel's eager audience the video was also being streamed to Kelly's personal YouTube channel, which still remains up to this day. Mm. The live stream captured it all. The thrill, the danger, showing their relentless pursuit of the storm that could produce a tornado. The stream in question goes on for two and a bit hours, and it shows the pair chasing the storm through torrential rain, hoping and praying that a tornado would form. The stream, you can see it's raining and the skies had darkened, but while chasing the storm and looking out for the tornado to form, a crucial detail was missed. As they sped down a rural Texas road in their Chevrolet Suburban, Kelly and Randall approached an intersection at a high speed. In all the chaos of the moment, they failed to see a stop sign at the intersection as they barreled towards it at 70 miles an hour. Before this sign, all on stream, they ran around four other stop signs. This was something that the pair reportedly did often. However, for this stop sign, as they raced towards it, a fellow storm chaser and certified storm spotter from Arizona, 25-year-old Corbin Yeager, was driving his Jeep towards the same intersection. Oh. He had the right of way and was carefully tracking the storm, unaware of what danger was speeding towards him. As the two storm chasers sped down that road, all on live, they went past the stop sign and collided with Corbin. Oh. The stream cuts off just before this happens, but the collision was swift and catastrophic. The two storm chasers collided with Jager's Jeep with devastating force. Kelly, who was not wearing a seatbelt, was ejected from the windscreen straight out of the vehicle and died instantly. Randall. This is so crazy, man, because I'm thinking that they died in the actual freaking storm, man. They died in a car accident. And this is one of those car accidents that I feel like is the rarest of rarest car accidents. You know what I'm saying? It's just what is the chances of them meeting in that intersection at that same specific time, my brothers and sisters? This go back to what Ryan was saying earlier. It go back to what I've been preaching forever. You know what I'm saying, man? That I feel like we got this clock. And when your clock gonna run out it's gonna run out and however it's your time to go it's just gonna be your time to go because come on man the chances of them meeting at that moment in time right there in that intersection is crazy oh who was passenger was also sadly killed as was corbin who had been driving on his own minding his own business with his seatbelt fastened Spur, Texas, three storm chasers were killed while on their way to cover one of those storms. We're told the accident happened near an area that was under a tornado warning at the time. The storm chasers have been identified as Kelly Williamson, Randall Yarnall, and Corbin Yeager. Williamson and Yarnall were part of a team called Storm Wranglers, often seen on the Weather Channel. According to multiple sources, the windshield of Kelly and Randall Suburban was reportedly obstructed by various pieces of equipment, including a radar screen a cell phone, a video camera, and a computer, which may have contributed to the crash as they might have just not seen that sign. Viewers of the live stream were left in shock as the feed suddenly went dark. Then they saw the fatal crash on the news. The aftermath of the crash was profound. The Weather Channel, for whom Kelly and Randall worked as contractors, issued a public statement expressing their deep condolences. However, the tragedy sparked a larger conversation about safety in storm chasing in general. 25-year-old Corbin Yeager, who was driving along minding his own business, was killed just chasing a storm. Jaeger's mother filed a $125 million lawsuit against the Weather Channel, accusing the network of gross negligence. The lawsuit alleges that the channel had prioritized sensational content over safety and allowed their reckless driving behavior that ultimately led to the tragedy. An attorney on the case went over this lawsuit with me. He says, based on evidence, the Weather Channel is responsible for this accident. Four months before Corbin 
Jaeger was killed. People were texting the Weather Channel and saying these people were dangerous. Davidson went over the lawsuit, pointing out that the two storm chasers involved in the crash, Kelly Williamson and Randall Yarnell, violated basic traffic laws. The Weather Channel was fully aware of and had been warned by third parties that their storm wranglers engaged in reckless driving before the tragedy. This storm chaser texted the Weather Channel employee, quote, as far as storm wranglers, I understand the need and fact for, quote, dumbing down, close quote, for the general public. The fact of the matter is that you have two very inexperienced, new and uneducated chasers. It was also noted that Kelly and Randall, despite their popularity, they both had no formal training and were involved in dangerous driving practices in the pursuit of compelling footage. In 2021, this lawsuit was settled out of court for an undisclosed amount, bringing closure to a horrible period for all parties involved. This incident serves as a sombering reminder of the truly fine line between capturing the excitement of extreme weather and the responsibility to safeguard human life. The yeah. pursuit of the storm, no matter how epic the footage is, should never cost you your life. Man, that one went different than I thought it was going, my brothers and sisters. I thought that uh, those guys was going to die in the storm. Like, they was going to get caught up in a tornado caught on live stream. And I got to bring up the whole live stream live stream aspect again, man. The, just the fact that there are people out there who actually witness these tragedies happen. You know what I'm saying, man? Got to keep that in mind. But it's just for me... As far as that one, more than anything, it's like, dude, why did they, like, why did they run that stop sign? And they had a history of running it. Why was they doing that? I guess this this my theory or my thinking on why they was being reckless out there driving this stuff. Uh, I think they, because they was thinking that nobody else on the road, it's a freaking tornado right down the street. You know what I'm saying, man? Ain't nobody else driving right now. So we, we ignored all traffic laws right now. We trying to get the footage. We trying to get the tornado. We, you know what I'm saying? But it don't excuse none of it. But at the same time, I don't really blame them dudes like that. I just feel like this is one of those sticky situations and one of those situations where I really could just be like, man, when is your time? to go is your time to go and that applies to all three of them man because those two dudes are the one who was driving with the other dude in the car they ain't want to kill that man and he ain't want to die like nobody in this situation wanted to die or kill nobody you know what i'm saying it was just one of them terrible tragedy tales man long story short short story long let's get to number one number one The CrossFit Games, held annually within the USA, are the ultimate test of fitness. Spanning five days, the Games challenge the competitors across a wide variety of fitness domains, including strength, endurance, speed, and agility. Each day of the competition is packed with multiple events designed to push athletes to their absolute limits, both physically and mentally. At the end of these grueling days, the winners are crowned as the fittest on earth earning not only this prestigious title, but also a substantial cash prize and sponsorship deals. The 2024 games held in Fort Worth, Texas were no exception. But amidst the intense challenges, an unforeseen tragedy unfolded, one that would forever change the event and the lives of all those who witnessed it. On August the 8th, 2024, it was time for the games to begin. By early morning, the temperature had already reached a scorching 100 degrees Fahrenheit, or around 37.7 degrees Celsius. At 7 a.m., the first of three events for the day was set to start. It was a triathlon-style challenge specifically designed to test the athlete's endurance and grit. This event began with a three and a half mile run, followed by an 800 meter swim in the warm waters of Marine Creek Reservoir before a break to the next event. That first day was planned to finish with intense weightlifting at 5.30 p.m., this first day was not a challenge for the faint of heart. It was literally designed to separate the good from the great. Among the competitors that year was Lazar Dukic. Lazar was a 28-year-old Serbian athlete known for his incredible dedication and resilience. He'd earned respect in the CrossFit community 
not just for his physical prowess, but for his amazing character, his kindness, not to mention his unwavering commitment to pushing himself and supporting athletes around him. So, as the clock ticked past 7am on August the 8th, all the athletes anxiously gathered at the starting line. The sun was already blazing, as I said, was causing competitors to begin to worry about the grueling run and then the swim. Lazar, with his trademark focus, took a deep breath and set off as the starting horn blared. Of course, the first step of the challenge was the run, and this was extremely demanding, made even worse by the searing heat bearing down on the athletes. Yeah. Despite this, Lazar kept a steady pace, but by the time he approached the reservoir, he must have been absolutely exhausted. He jumped in and began the 800 meter swim. The stream shows the ending of the swim, showing the athletes reaching the end and completing the first event. And this is when you can see Lazar coming into the finish line. Now the water oh. that day was 87 degrees Fahrenheit, adding an unexpected layer of difficulty to the swim. The fatigue from the run, combined with the stifling heat of the water, slowly began to take its toll. Lazar, who had been moving strongly, started to show signs of strain. Shortly after 8am, as he neared the final 100 meters of the swim, the mood among the spectators began to shift from excitement to serious concern. Some spectators noticed that Lazar's strokes had become uneven, his movements had become more labored, and in a moment of visible distress, he removed his swim cap meaning that he was possibly overheating while swimming. Spectators and fellow athletes alike began shouting for aid, their voices filled with urgency. Some athletes and spectators yelled to lifeguards that were stationed on paddle boards to help Lazar out the water as he was struggling, but their response was shockingly slow. A concerned spectator even jumped into the water, noticing the severity of the situation, only to be turned away by one of the volunteers on the paddle boards. Has been cancelled. Exit the venue in an orderly fashion. It soon became clear to everyone that these volunteers were not equipped to handle such a crisis. As Lazar continued to struggle, they searched in the water, and Lazar was nowhere to be seen. So the lifeguard returned to his original spot. Absolutely ridiculous. The scene was truly heartbreaking. Under the water, Lazar's life hung in the balance, yet the proper help was nowhere to be found. By the time the alarm was fully raised at around 8.25 a.m., it was already far too late. The search for Lazar ramped up quickly, but at 9.20 a.m., his body was recovered from the water. He was dead. Man, I feel like this is one of those ones that could have been prevented. Like, seriously, though. You know what I'm saying, man? Like, come on, man. Golly, like all those people out there who know how to swim, you got you got a hundred life. I'm I'm being I'm exaggerating. I'm using hyperboles or whatever you want to say, but you got a hundred freaking lifeguards or people who are qualified to be lifeguards, people who know how to swim, and could nobody save this man out there right around him? Like I don't understand. Like oh my man. It's like, dude, did, did y'all not know what was going on at the time or what? Or do y'all just ain't care? Y'all didn't realize that he not looking right in this water? Because if you're having a competition like this, you, if you're having a, not a marathon, a triathlon, you know what I'm saying? If you're doing that, man, and it's the part, it's the course where they got to swim through the river or whatever, man, the lake or whatever. Yeah, it should be all eyes on the lake. Should be all eyes on the river, man. And you got to make sure everybody, every contestant is um all good. And if not, Call one of your lifeguards and you should have plenty of them out there to come help them out. But it's like nobody helped them. And everybody around him, I feel like, could have helped them. And I'm not blaming it as far as like the other contestants because they probably was too focused on trying to be number one. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the people who was held, held, holding this event. They the ones who should have been attentive to this. Another tragedy tales, y'all. Just like that. The man go the man go to uh compete in a race and just like that. The snap of a finger. Let's go. The athletes, spectators, as well as the organizers were left in shock. The excitement of the competition was replaced by a profound sense of terrible grief. Now this whole tragedy unfolded within just hours of the game's beginning. 
raising serious questions about the adequacy of safety measures in place. It turns out there was only five water personnel overseeing the 79 athletes that day, and there were only two stationed near the end on paddle boards where Lazar drowned. It was clear that the event had failed in its most basic duty to protect the lives of its participants. Well, Ryan just answered, well, answered or uh, uh, gave me an explanation of what I was talking about earlier because I'm sitting up here talking about, and you would think that it would be a lot of different people out there, you know what I'm saying, overseeing this event. Ryan said it was two people out there, you know what I'm saying, two freaking lifeguards, long story, short story, long. Like, what the freak? They need to be sued, and as we all know, man, suing people as far as these treasures when people lose their life is not gonna bring them back but it at least some type of compensation for it you know what i'm saying man they need to be held accountable that's the better thing i should say they need to be held accountable for this because this is not how you operate your triathlon triathlon is that the word event lazar's death has sparked widespread outrage and a call for change within the CrossFit community. The events on August the 8th were cancelled, but on August the 9th, after a small tribute to Lazar, the games continued like nothing happened. As his brother Luca later reflected, Lazar wasn't just an athlete, he was a fighter and a friend, someone who always brought out the best in others, and losing him like this is just unimaginable. I hear that the athletes sign away their rights to sue when entering, but I hear these often do not cover negligence, so whether or not lawsuits will arise, only time will tell. This tragic event serves as a powerful reminder that even the strongest athletes, even the most resilient people among us, are still vulnerable without proper safeguards. The hope yeah. now is that Lazar's death will lead to significant changes within the CrossFit Games to ensure that athletes do not pay the ultimate price in the pursuit of greatness. Tragedy. But that is the end of the video. Good golly, this one was tragic. May Lazar and the rest of the people featured rest in peace. Now these streams genuinely gave me a nightmare, especially Nuong falling into the oven after a heart attack. It really makes you think that any day could be your last. Mia who hopped in a car with someone who was extremely drunk. That story is crazy. It's obvious to say that both of them should have never gotten in the car I don't need to tell you guys that drink driving is wrong, but the blame rests solely on the driver. His mistakes cost both of them their lives. The streamer who drank two liters of wine with antibiotics is just absolutely wild. What do I even say about this? Obviously, don't ever try this. And if you find yourself ever watching a stream such as this, don't encourage it. The tornado chasers that skipped that red stoplight sadly paid the ultimate price. I know they were in the middle of the storm chasing a possible tornado but safety really should have been their top priority and talking about safety being the top priority the crossfit games where was the safety here was this not foreseen the fact that the crossfit games continued the very next day after a very brief tribute as if nothing happened is a little bit bizarre but i guess the show must go on it seems that this was an accident waiting to happen but most importantly what did you think of this one? As always, I read every single comment, so do let me know what you thought in the comments below. But just before I go, if you look down there and you're not subscribed, be sure to click that subscribe button now and remember to tickle that notification bell to be alerted when I release content such as this. But I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. My brothers and sisters, it's from the beginning, man. From the very beginning of this video, I said how Ryan just reminds you. In the snap of a finger, you could just be gone, man, like that. And even like looking, we're going to start from the fifth case and we're going to work our way back. Even from the dude who was swimming. I can't remember his name now, but rest in peace to him. Like he had an athletic body. That was his first rodeo doing that type of ish. You know what I'm saying? Being in those type of events. And he even still couldn't hold on it was still at the snap of a finger that he lost his life under that water and i'm pretty sure he had been in that water plenty of times but as far as like the whole 
organization or whoever the holding the event they was not held accountable at all they just said they just held a little thing rest in peace to him and the next day the show go on it's so effed up with that one y'all it's just rest in peace to him though rest in peace to him man i ain't gonna hold y'all too much longer y'all we're gonna run through them man um the one before that the storm chasers man i thought those guys i thought those guys died in the storm but no the come to freaking find out they die in just a random like one of the most randomness freaking car crashes you can ever even think of like just how it happened and, and people trying to blame them for the crash and i guess you can blame them but at the same time i understand why they maybe and i'm not trying to make excuses for what they did i know what they did was wrong i'm just saying that i know that they probably was running through those stop signs and stuff because they're not even thinking nobody else out there it's like not like i said earlier man none of those dudes was trying to kill any each other man it just Happened at a snap of a finger, and it was just a time to go. Um, the one before that, the, the boy, all these is just crazy, man. And we got to keep in mind all this stuff happened actually on live streams, y'all. But the one before that, man, with um, can't remember her name either. I don't remember none of these people's name right now, my brother and sister. But the lady, uh, who was spinning the wheel, man, for thirteen thousand dollars, man, gate it end up uh doing some stuff that end up in her life. Long story, short story, long, man. It's like, dude, man, oh man, it, it, it's it. We have watched a lot of a lot of videos over here, y'all. We have seen a lot of videos of people doing crazy is for live streams we in real life in your day-to-day -day life on youtube on facebook on tiktok you see people doing stuff that just cross the line all the time and sometimes these people across the line will end up ending a life man and a lot of times they do be money motivated you know what i'm saying man i just hate that this even happened to her and it's like don't 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 go too far for the fame for the money for the whatever my brothers and sisters long story short story long it is not freaking worth it the one before that the deadly drive the title of the video this one of those ones man well i ain't gonna lie y'all i get it because i am a drinker i have been drunk before you know what i'm saying man to that point where i feel like I can do stuff that I shouldn't be doing. And that what happened to them, man. But yeah, they 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 went they was too too drunk. I like and this go this goes back to the Mr. Balling. This goes back to the Mr. Balling from Sunday, y'all. When it was the uh dude who was so drunk so he didn't even realize that it was a dead body in his passenger seat. If y'all ain't watched that video, go check it out, man. But it goes back to that, man. I can say I've been drunk on the road, but I never been this freaking drunk. You know what I'm saying, man? Well, I get in a car and two minutes later, I done just crashed and flipped and did all that to end my life. I never been that far, but I'm just saying, man, I can get how people can get that far freaking alcohol man you gotta be careful and like the like the commercials the bud light -like commercials the coronas the Michelob, the coors light well you name it man what the commercials always have they either say it or they have it in the captions drink responsibly let's go to the first one y'all man we finna get on up out of here man oh uh, the first one stream of doom with the lady arrested now ryan started off crazy with this one he started off so crazy with this one because it, this was i think this was the the one where it's just really like what the freak at the snap of a second the lady just on live stream like she have been doing for a while now you know and then she just on live stream and she just have a heart attack long story short short story long just have a heart attack out of no mail out of nowhere a random heart attack man and end up losing her life while she's standing over the stove cooking some food you know what i'm saying man it just make me think about it y'all i'm about to go in there and cook me something to eat and uh, you mean to tell me why i'm just standing over the stove cooking whatever the cook freak i'm cooking i can just freaking fall out like that it's just so crazy man 
Like Ryan said and like I've said all the time, being team for a long time, man. We all got a clock. And he said over our head, but I just say we got a clock. We got an internal clock, and it's running down. It's counting down. It's not going up. And one day, that clock is going to hit zero, zero, point zero, zero. But I digress. I'm going to let y'all go now, man. I know I kind of went on some tangents, some soapboxes on this one. So if you, if you made it this far, I appreciate you coming on back as always. And before y'all leave, just please, 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 please hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and do all that if you ain't did that yet. And you know, you know, you know, you know you got to come back tomorrow. Because we are going back to Mr. Ballin. And until then, my friends, also remember this. Love, peace, and happiness. Stay safe. Don't stop. Keep going. Yeah.